So Stephanie, if you want to do roll call, thank you very much. Yeah, what's going on? Commissioner Ali. Present. Uh, Commissioner Dillard. Here. Um, Commissioner Gathua. Yes. Commissioner Johnson. Here. Commissioner Harris. Here. Uh, Commissioner Nobis. Uh, Commissioner Rivera. Here. And Commissioner Treori. Here. Thank you. Okay, um, so we'll go with the reading of the land acknowledgement, and I'll go ahead and just read it. Um, it says, we meet today in the community of Iowa City, which now occupies the homelands of Native American nations to whom we owe our commitment and dedication. The area of Iowa City was, was within the homelands of Iowa, Meskwaki, and Sauk. And because history is complex and time goes back, far back beyond memory, we also acknowledge the ancient connections of many other indigenous peoples here. The history of broken treaties and forced removal that dispossess indigenous peoples of their homelands was and is an act of colonization and genocide that we cannot erase. We implore the Iowa City community to commit to understanding and addressing these injustices as we work toward equity, restoration, and reparations. Okay, so now we'll go um, in approved meeting minutes from August 4th. Rivera, so moved. Do I have a second? Seconded. Okay. okay. Been properly moved and seconded. Any discussion? Commissioner Ali? Yeah. Commissioner Dillard? Yes. Commissioner Gathawa? Yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Rivera? Yes. And Commissioner Traore? Yes. Motion passes 7 0. Thank you. Now we'll move into item number six and we'll open up for public comment. First, going online. Does anyone have public comment? Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped number five. Um, public comment of items not on the agenda. Does anyone have any public comment of items not on the agenda? That would be us. Okay, go ahead. Yes, this is Orville Townsend. I'm a citizen of our city. And I just wanted to share a concern that I have with the commission. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. thank you. Yes. Uh, my concern is that, well, first of all, I just want to say that when the city first decided to create the commission, I was very happy, pleased, and I supported it wholeheartedly, and I still do. But I find myself at this time at a point of concern because I was recently verbally, publicly verbally attacked by a, by a person for no reason at all. Ordinarily, I respect the person's right for freedom of speech. But the concern I have here is I find myself in a situation where this individual has been appointed by the city to your commission. And I, I don't think that, I think that when an individual applies for a city appointment, if they have it, they're also indicating that they're willing to do everything they can to improve conditions in the city, to respect all citizens and abide by all laws and rules. And anytime anyone just out of the blue begins to attack other citizens, then I, I have concerns about that person being a part of, of a commission. You have an individual on your commission that has, I feel, for no reason at all, pointed me out and wronged me. And uh, I don't think that person should be on the commission or anything or, chairing. or cha uh, chairing the commission. If the person wants to be a member, that's one thing. But I don't think that person definitely should be chairing or representing the commission. So I ask you to give my concerns some consideration and hopefully decide whether or not you as members of a commission who's representing a commit the community wish to have a person chairing your commission that is verbally attacking members of the community. So I, I don't know if you were aware of this, 
but I want to make sure you are because I want to bring it to your attention at this time. And the mail also attacked members of the commission, which is also a no-no. Um, so you need to take a look at that. Thank you very Thank you. much. Is there anyone else um, on, on Zoom in the public that'd like to talk about something that's not on our uh, meeting notes? Okay, we'll move to anyone in person. Okay. Uh, there's a microphone right here. I don't understand the content of any of this. I feel maybe she was frustrated with the lack of concern for keeping the group moving in a positive way. I know that the mayor himself was the only one that tried to vote Emil off the commission. Uh, I think Emil has an excellent content of character. I think if she said something that was off color, it might have been because she was frustrated with the group not gaining traction. And that's what we need to do as a community is we need to stand up and look out for each other's civil rights. Because if one person loses their civil rights, everybody does. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the public that'd like to make comments? All right, we'll move on to item number six. And again, open up to public comment before we go into the draft proposal. So anyone online? Anyone in public that wants to talk about number six? And now I'll move it on to our commission. And I, um, I assume we're gonna hear from you all first. Yeah. Is there any way we could open public comment after they've presented also? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. Perfect. Um, I was trying to get into the meeting to share screen. The fastest way is probably to go to the City of Iowa City webpage because I don't have a direct link myself and just click the link for the first TRC meeting, join the Zoom, and then I can promote you. Okay. I, I think I just clicked on the wrong one. <laughs> Right, because today is the first day. <laughs> Try calling you. It's okay. Which one? Two or one. It makes you register, so then you're going to have to get that email. Got it. After we talk. Mm -hmm. I also can't get on, but I need to hold the page down. <clears throat> Thanks. I just will um, share my screen when you get a chance. Do you want to get near the mic when you're ready? To yeah. Speak? Let me change your name. Thank you. Sorry. It should work. To your legal name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, the same yeah. phone number that I, I talked to you yeah. the other night. Wouldn't be a meeting without technical <laughs> issues. <laughs> um, um, apologies. No, that's exactly. Hey. Um, trying to view. There we go. Okay. Great. Yes. Thank you. Um, we fixed my eyes with uh, SD planning and I'm here with a group of folks. We will just go through this presentation and then talk through any parts of the proposal, um, that you would like to talk through. Um, so just to give you a quick overview, I do want to go over our team because we did just kind of delineate a little bit further who is actually on our team. Um, and then we are gonna go through some of the proposal sections and then definitely spend some time on the modifications and changes that we've made since the last uh, joint session meeting. And then also since we've had meetings with um, commissioners. Then we do have a timeline that we'll review and then of course a budget, um, which should have been sent in an Excel spreadsheet. So you should be able to see all the pages, but let, let us know if not. Um, 
So I'll let uh, basically everybody just introduce themselves. So I can introduce like healing partners. <laughs> uh, obviously I'm there, V Fix My Rise. Uh, Angie Jordan with Banjo and Its Empowerment. Annie Tucker with Mediation Services of Eastern Iowa. Kearns and West, you're on. I don't believe they are. Okay. So I thought I saw Larry as well. Um, oh, you didn't see Andrew. So yeah, Larry, if you wanted to just go through your team, because I don't think everybody's met everybody. Hey, can uh, everybody hear me? Yes. yes. <laughs> Sound like a frog, so I'll, I'll keep it brief. Uh, but this is Larry Schooler from Kearns and West, and Hannah Khalil and Jason Gershowitz are part of our team. Uh, I'll leave it there. Thanks. I'm from from Think Peace. Was there somebody on? Okay. Well, we have um, Dave Ragland, Eduardo Gonzalez, and then they've also added Stephanie Rose Spalding. Um, I think it's Dr. Stephanie Rose Spalding, actually. Uh, very excited about their team. And I'm sure they'll expound more as we kind of move along. <laughs> and then, of course, we have... We have the Native Partners, thanks to Sakawas, introducing us to them. And on the left, we have T. Medina, Terry Medina. He lives out in Nebraska, I believe. I, 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 we've just met a couple of times by Zoom and we're planning a meeting together out in, in September out West, so we'll know more. But he just retired from adult corrections and is doing a lot, has always done a lot of group work and is being sought out to do group work um, on his own outside of that role. And um, then Manape Lamer, he's done a lot of different kinds of healing work and he shared that with us. And um, he started our Zoom meeting with a prayer, which was, um, which was powerful. And um, when he heard about what we were wanting to do was provide circles, but with right relationship, in the course of that conversation, he said that we should we should create together circles, Iowa circles for all Iowans. So he's the one who said that. On the right is Danielle Wanati. She's a Meskwaki. And I want to admit at this point that I didn't have my notes to look and see what tribes Manape and T are from and representing. So that's on me. But anyway, Danielle, in the course of our conversation said, you know, my father passed a couple of years ago and he was a school teacher. And what was important to him was people coming together and connecting. And so she felt like this work is something that he would have been for. And she's looking forward, <clears throat> excuse me, forward to being part of it. So we're looking forward to continue building our work with them and learning from them. Um, so Terrence is Santee and uh, from the Santee Nation. Um, so he's, uh, I believe, Lakota or Dakota. Manape is um, from the Hwangtawan uh, Nation and the um, Winnebago Nation. Thank you, Sakawas. Thank you. Commissioner Nobis, thank you so much. Um, Yes, just starting to get our relationships um, together. So appreciate that and really appreciate Commissioner Nobis and, and connecting us. The proposal sections, as you can kind of see, I'm uh, just going to go over on a like kind of high level, obviously just gives you a little bit about who our teams are. We added um, expectations of the city and commissioners, which we'll go into a little bit more detail in terms of some of the changes. But that was based on um, essentially conversations that uh, we've had obviously with commissioners, but also with uh, with city staff. 
and um, trying to put together some expectations there. And it's not necessarily expectations of commissioners. It's more of just some description of role, I think. Um, then we go a bit into our scope, how it's a phased approach, um, and then the budget there. So the changes and modifications. So a lot of the bare bones are here, but we want to point out some of those changes and modifications. So one thing that we did really hear was the more equitable percentage distribution amongst the entire group. So at one point there was concern that Kearns and West had a very high percentage. And so they have worked very hard internally um, to change that, to change some of the structure for their, you know, how much they're charging, but also to look at how can they redistribute who is um, doing what, when, and for how many hours. And then we've also added um, some more time for community members, um, which is, we'll go into that for the local groups and facilitators. Um, but we feel like that was a very, it, it was a lot of feedback that we got, not only from council and from others, commissioners, uh, but it was something that we were sort of struggling with internally as well. So it was actually a great opportunity for our team to really have frank conversations. Did you want to say anything else about that? I just, just want to take a moment and kind of just highlight that, the fact that uh, we had to do some of our own truth telling and um, reconciliation within the team before we've even gotten a chance to get the second proposal to you. Um, I think that's a big deal. And that's because the TRC exists. So just wanted to just kind of underline that, uh, that the process that you all are, are charged with, it's already been happening. And I know you all know that, but I just wanted to add that into this space. So the local groups and facilitators, this is something that we've been talking about since day one, since we've come together. And it's something that we heard from council. And so it was really just more of like, where can we pull this out so that it's front and center? And so we did just say, look, we need a $10,000 community fund for any group, individual, professional in our community that wants to get a part of this. We just need to have a fund to pay people because we're not the only people. And we know this, we've been talking about this, but we wanted to show that's where the money is. Is 10,000 enough? We have no idea. We just thought we would start here. Um, if it's too much, it moves on to the next thing, but we need to hold, have a placeholder for that. And we understand how, uh, you know, how important that is for budgets and um, what that means. Think Peace already had a local facilitator and they've had it the entire time for 4,400. It's always been in there. That is specifically for their what they're looking at with the truth telling. So we wanted to honor that and just say in addition to. Yeah. Uh, the city position and city expectations. Actually, we'll turn this over to my colleagues because they worked very closely with the city to to move this through. Um, why don't you start? Yeah, it's really exciting to have these conversations with the city because um, they have a process, right, in hiring and developing positions, and uh, that process it 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 has its own integrity, and its fairness, and all the things that that make it into what is going to be a legitimate position. So we came with, hey, this is a job description. Hey, these are the things. This is what you should pay them. Hey, hey, hey. Um, and so having this conversation with the city, being able to sort of restructure that into, instead of saying this is the position you guys should create breaking it down saying this is the expectations that we would have of the city if they created a position they want to make sure as i understand it take those expectations and run it through their process not just uh posting the job but also making sure that all the departments in the city um, are checked is the communication department the the you know all the different things are the resources that are already there they go through their process so that they can create something and just a reminder about this position what was important to us is that it is connected to the city so that um, again it kind of helps to legitimize but it also it's it's a commitment and an investment from the city that's very very explicit uh so i want to just pause there the coordinator position by the way yeah so yeah sorry thank you we took <laughs> that out of the the language and put it into city expectations but it still lives um it's just not a coordinator position that we're thrusting upon the city it's more uh the expectations that we would have of the city to support this proposal. And just to underscore it, what they told us was this is normal for them with some some external entity that's coming to them with a proposal. 
that it be a set of expectations. So this is just their normal for dealing with that. So we work within that framework. I'll just add on to that, that um, this coordinator position we feel is incredibly important. Uh, it would be the glue for, for all of the groups and also for the commission members. This would be the person like hosting all the meetings and helping with facilitation. We recognize our healing partners team recognizes that there's gonna be a lag in time. And so we have actually put in here that we would be happy to help step in in the interim on a volunteer basis, basically. So that is also in the proposal, but um, it's not spelled out here. So I just thought I would say that we that we understand there's a lag in time that would probably happen. And we don't want that to happen. So um, adding a third phase. So this was something that we felt from the beginning that it was not, not gonna be enough time, but we were really trying to honor that June 30th deadline. And so we had those two phases and we still will honor those two phases. We just want to have a placeholder for a third phase that says, hey, June 30th, you know, as we're you know, coming up on April, May, like we'll have a sense of where things are at. And we actually have it in here for a pause and for a reevaluation. We'll be able to say, what, what work do we have left to do? Are we ready to give final recommendations or do we need three, four, five, six months? Um, so we have that in there as a placeholder. We don't know what it will be. So we did not include that in our budget. That would be just something that we would you know, have to look at when that time came. But we do want to recognize that there are a lot of unknowns um, and that June 30th was fast approaching. And I would also add that it was something that um, you know, internally we had, but also the city council pointed that out pretty explicitly as well, that, hey, you know, and you all did too at different times. So wanting to make sure that was in there. Um, the other thing that gets me excited about the third phase is that it, it, you know, again, depending on how it evolves, but it could be an opportunity to onboard even more community partners uh, that have seen the first and second phase and maybe just aren't yet seeing what their role is, but as it shapes out, uh, creating spaces to continue to invite more community partnership more entities, more individuals. And again, like V was saying, being explicit that it's a placeholder um, depending on how the first two phases go. And what I'd like to just underscore again is that the evaluations that happen at the end of the phases are all of us, all of us who are involved. You all, of course, any of the partners, at, like looking at what have we accomplished? What remains? And so same with that third phase. The, um, the next bullet point, clarity regarding TRC member roles. This was something that we heard um, a few times that maybe there just needed to be a little bit more clarity as to like, what are some of those expectations? Would you see that in sort of the city expectation and, and TRC um, member section. And really we just tried to call out a little bit more description and use some examples there, but essentially what it really comes down to, and we spent a quite a bit of time internally talking about this, that it's not necessarily, you know, this is, um, you know, one through 10 of what you should be doing. This is an invitation for you to be as engaged as possible, knowing that what we're, you're being tasked with is, a, it is an incredible task. And so there may be times where you have to step up. There may be times when you have to step back. There's gonna be aspects of things that come up that you may, be, you may gravitate towards because you have a knowledge base or you have relationships. So it's really just an invitation and an acknowledgement of the incredible work that is ahead and ways in which you can or, or need to take care of yourself. We do talk explicitly about how modeling self-care and radical love is something that we really would love to see happen on the TRC um, as it is a model for how, how we move forward. And I would add, I don't know if you said it, but I'm just going to say it again, if, if they did, um, that the TRC, again, you guys all know this, the TRC is unlike any other city commission. So we need to highlight that. You all brought that up. Um, and in the proposal, we made sure to do that uh, so that that's part of our values moving forward that we, like V was saying, continue to honor and normalize that we need to value the self-care and that this is, this is a very different commission than all the others. Yeah. Um, and just want to note, just to highlight the fact that it is an entirely BIPOC commission and that the, the issues that are going to be raised, obviously, may be harmful to commissioners. And so that's, again, why it is an invitation 
for people to engage if and when and how you can. The next aspect is a clear description of the strategic doing process. We tried to write in there, you know, what that could look like. Um, it is a very, uh, I want to say simple framework, but the work is actually a really a rolling up of sleeves. So we did try and identify, you know, what that means is, you know, we're getting everybody together. We invite the community members, we invite commissioners, we invite community leaders, and we talk about who is in the room, what assets everybody has, and what are some of the things that we want to be doing? What are those pathfinder projects? And then um, you follow up every, every 30 days. So that's that aspect of it. Um, and then of course the timeline and community involvement. So we were asked to put a timeline together. It's a little tricky because um, a lot of this is unknown, but we do have some benchmarks in terms of what that um, could look like. And especially when you look at what is phase one and what is phase two and what is potentially in phase three. So as you can see with that timeline, you know, we, the think piece had started with, you know, wanting to incorporate a community-wide healing session as like a kickoff. Um, and obviously their educational series begins. There's a lot of aspects. And I really encourage if you haven't already to read the think piece um, proposal that was separate because they give a lot of detail in terms of what and how they conduct the truth telling um, or the educational things and then also the truth telling aspects. Uh, so you can see also like fact finding, strategic doing, pathfinders. So we've tried to encapsulate into phase one, everything that we think that will happen in there, but that's a broad stroke. Um, I think that there's a lot of smaller things that are not really necessarily showing up. And then, then phase two is really digging into the truth telling. So that's going to be, you know, all of the, um, yeah, public hearings and things like that the fact finding is really gonna get into more advanced data collection. We'll start doing the healing circles, um, public hearings, yeah, reconciliation gatherings. So there is at every break, I meant to say, there's also an evaluation and presentation um, to city council. And then phase three, we just extended it six months. Um, again, a big question mark as to like what necessarily will be done, but I, I have a feeling that it'll be a lot of the things that you see in phase two and potentially some of the things you see in phase one. So. Um, again, a, a, a lot there. The budget, um, so things that we really wanted to pull apart for you was um, thing one that, th that Kearns and West pulled out a fact-finding liaison. We ended up calling it a community researcher, but they do need a, a boots on the ground person that will go and get the data that they can't, isn't necessarily widely available on the, on the interwebs. So they've pulled that out and said, this is a very smart community. I think we have a lot of passionate people that can do this type of research. So that would be a position out that, that they pulled out of their own scope. And we have that listed here. Um, and then the, that's that. Um, and then we have the 10,000 for the local groups, the 2200, that's um, think piece. Um, that's that the person that they had um, listed. So as you can see, the percentages are a little bit more even across the board. Um, and yeah, we've, we've tried to just show a little bit more clarity. You should have detailed pages for each entity um, so that you can see the rates, the amount of time, the different types of um, projects and, and aspects. And with that, I, I turn it over to my colleagues or over for questions. Yeah. Or if Larry or um, yeah. Eduardo <clears throat> would want to add in or chime in. I'm here ready to answer to any question that the colleagues will have. As am I. Yes, with that, we conclude our presentation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, thank you all for taking another stab at this and um, coming back with an even better proposal, in my opinion. Um, I, I, I love what you all put together. One of the questions, I, I think I talked to one of you outside of this was, um, did you mention marketing at all? Um, where that would be if um, we wanted to um, 
once we get on the ground running, do t-shirts or um, just have swag or things like that that get people that you know pique people's interests um, at that time. And um, if you it also social media, that would be really helpful to have one of your teammates do that. Absolutely. I think something um, I'm glad you bring that up. I also think to the expectations on the city and in their city departments, what they already have going on, making sure that we really squeeze those resources um, uh, and, and build off of what the gaps are, uh, but really uh, prioritizing and holding the city accountable to be using the, the departments um, for, for all those things. <clears throat> Um, been jotting down some ideas in terms of the outreach and visibility component. Um, it's been repeated a lot that this is, again, a first of its kind commission and also uh, looking to make this some type of template for potentially other communities to use. So I think a really helpful thing in that would be to have a sort of public dashboard or web page associated with it. Um, I do have a platform in mind specifically in terms of uh, how this can all be architected, be publicly viewable, and also allow for input um, from others. So it's called a Notion, and essentially you could create a web page out of it and have uh, dashboards, flowcharts, things of that nature, that people could see actual updates on what the Pathfinder projects are, um, how far along uh, we are on path Pathfinder projects, could even add uh, task lists on there. So they see the tasks that are being done uh, at certain times, um, provide access to the actual data that we are analyzing and looking at if anyone wants to do any independent analysis or even um, uh, pitch in ideas for other data points to look into. Um, you can also use a platform called Typeform for including community input forms. So if anyone sees anything that piques their interest within this dashboard or web page that they can uh, reach out and say so. Um, could have pages such as calendars that uh, highlight all the meetings and events and agendas so that those are centralized and um, contact info and point people for specific, uh, for specific tasks and projects. Um, and also like reading and resource lists could be put there as well so that the whole thing is documented throughout um, and it's a reproducible process, but also as things change or uh, as phases go on, people actually understand the complete flow of, of how uh, everything came about. So whether you were to jump in now and start paying attention, started paying attention from the beginning or pay attention closer to the end, there's a full accounting for everything that was done, which I think would make the compilation of all of the um, resources that we'll use, the tasks that we'll be working on, and um, all the testimony would be a lot easier to compile if we have a better recording of this. And if it's a publicly viewable website, um, that also allow it to be you know hosted pretty much for good for anyone to look at and use. It wouldn't even have to be a direct city website, I don't believe, uh, if we apply uh, for it in the correct way. Essentially, wouldn't we just have to put in a form designating uh, what we would want to create, who would have access uh, to actually update records within it, and then also um, information on how to, uh, how to access the platform in itself. Stephanie? Um, I will uh, reach out to the city attorney's office tomorrow to get an opinion from them. I, okay. I think they're probably the best people to answer that question. Okay. Yeah, sorry, that was a, a lot at once. But yeah, I can jot that down on an actual just like form or piece of paper and hand that to you. So it's a little less uh, just a jumble of words, but that's what I have. Thanks. Um, and kind of piggybacking off of um, what Commissioner Traore said, I think all of those ideas are really great, um, but I also want to think about accessibility and the different demographics that we have. Uh, like for example, my mom would have no idea how to navigate a web page like that. Um, and this kind of goes to the outreach portion. Um, like if we could work with, um, like for example, how the South District has that board, that community board that says like all of these things going on and all of that information. But like if we had 
a hub at, let's say, like the neighborhood center in Pheasant Ridge. That is a huge Sudanese population. Um, stuff like that in Arabic and maybe like, I don't know, like I think of like a drop, a locked drop box where people could write in testimony or even say like, hey, there is something I want to talk about. Can, you know, this is my information and um, that. So I want to think about like accessibility and people who may or may not have smartphones or access to computers um, or the internet as well. I did want to add on that. I did jot a note for that, forgot to add. Um, so there's a newsletter platform, Substack, that we could use for free. Um, and with that could have uh, monthly, you know, updates on what's going on. Also uh, phase updates as phase is complete. And uh, each newsletter could be written in English and also have people translate to other languages such as Spanish, French, Portuguese, uh, Arabic, Swahili. Um, and uh, that would also allow for that all to be publicly viewable by anyone at any time. And then when it comes to helping people navigate the websites and web pages, I think we could just make uh, resource videos that just explain how to use uh, the actual website itself, how to use the materials, and then add in um, subtitles in different languages, or even have people um, walk through how the website works in different languages uh, for screen recordings, and have those on a YouTube channel, uh, can have those embedded within web pages as well. And I do like the idea of having the community hubs. Uh, I think that would be helpful as could use that for each phase or just uh, monthly updates have specific time set at community hubs that uh, going over what the commission has been doing if anyone's interested in attending so that there's multiple ways for anyone to be informed, whether it's showing up in person, uh, watching a recorded Zoom of the community hub events, uh, looking at a newsletter, looking at uh, the actual dashboard with all the information and just keeps everything reproducible and uh, available for anyone. Just to put my facilitator hat on for just a second, the um, I guess what we would like from you all, these are awesome ideas. And what we would like to know from you all is for this proposal, what you would like us to change or modify. I think these are fantastic ideas and we certainly need these ideas. But I think from you all, that's what we're looking for is direction um, for, for moving just this proposal forward so that then we can get to all these awesome things. Just want to put that out there, please. Um, so before we get away from this, um, what Amel said is true. Um, we need to make sure that everybody can access, you know, the information and things like that. And even in the past six months or so, when I had things that I was working on, um, someone told me about a guy who made flyers like actual flyers like where you can go to community hub centers maybe a food pantry maybe where people would go at and you can't just you know because everybody might not be able to access the internet they might not have sm smartphones like Camille said and so when you know for instance when I worked with Dream City um I had actual flyers that I went around to different businesses and posted them up at different business and it was like really effective it was like more effective than I thought it was because it wasn't anything that was intimidating. Like go to this website, and go log in and this, go do this, go do that. It was just simple, simple, like, Hey, contact this. And it may have an email in it or it may, you know, but it wasn't, you know, and, and then that would help people, you know, get into the more, you know, get into the dashboard things and things like that. But you have to be able to put information in places that people are going to go. You know, they're going to be, you know, they, you know, some people might have to go to the food pantry. Some people might go all the way down to a laundry mat. They might go to Hy-Vee. They might go to Casey's. You need to have those things, you know, everywhere. And so um, I, I would say that Dream City, they gave me a resource where I had a guy who would print things and print color photos and with good information and let people know. So I think that's a good thing that Emil said. We have to make sure that everybody can access the information and they won't have difficulties and because at times people will say hey well it's too difficult to get on this website you know it's too difficult to contact this so just forget about it and they have something simple like a dropbox or something and they can contact people and say hey i saw this flyer at the store when i was getting groceries i want to know about this Good idea. um i really appreciate all of the work um that uh 
not only you in the room, but um, all of the other folks um, elsewhere have put into um, really buffing up and adjusting, modifying. There's, you know, I could see a lot of the revisions and also just the intentionality in terms of um, creating something that was very specific to the process as it's already begun uh, with this commission, as well as um, kind of really localizing it while while maintaining a broad um, perspective of what truth telling could be. Um, specific to changes to the proposal, I have none. Um, I really appreciate all of the background info on the key players from the different umbrellas um, and how they'll be uh, organizing among themselves. I really appreciate the visuals. Um, so I think all of this um, would be very great for me to um, recommend to the city. Um, one thing that I uh, just had a question about in terms of budgeting, um, this budget is uh, um, primarily for, you know, the labor of the, uh, of the facilitation. Um, <clears throat> but I wonder if it's been uh, um, like, do you guys have a guess as to how much like truth telling processes in the community will cost? Um, I don't know if that's a fair question. <laughs> um, uh, Eduardo might be able to help. Yes, hi. So um, the truth telling processes, according to your mandate, uh, entail the creation of safe spaces for people to share stories. So that is typically what you would call a public hearing. That means a meeting with members of the commission who are there to receive um, the experiences of people in the public, in the communities that have been more harmed. And that can be, of course, surrounded by a number of different activities, rituals, spaces to ensure that, um, that this is a respectful space and it's a trauma-informed space. Um, each of those events can have, um, will have costs, of course. I do think that given the infrastructure that the city has, there are some costs that will not be included there. And that what is going to be intensive is the time that people are going to have to dedicate to receive people, to work with people, and very importantly, to work with people before they come to the um, actual events. Um, we will have to budget for that, of course, um, but I, I do think that it's um, those are very feasible. And, uh, and that basically the, the costs are the, are the costs of ensuring that we're going to have people dedicated to that and, and giving time to that, which is also why uh, in our budget, we included um, a small budget for a, a position within the city, um, a part-time position within the city. Um, I was gonna, ask about a more detailed part of something, but actually it's really well detailed in here, the media training. Um, and uh, also, and this might be like kind of a weird question to ask, but how, let's imagine in a perfect world that this has been um, approved by council and all of that, uh, what happens right after that? Like what in a perfect world, what would happen as soon as it gets approved? I'm assuming it would go into writing up the contracts. Yeah. So you're just asking like from the commission perspective, like what's the first thing we would do? Oh. Yeah, like, so <laughs> I'm like, imagining just because I'm so excited about this stuff, like I'm imagining like, something I would do text Angie and you and you know Annie right away and be like what can we do how can we get this started let's get this going but like obviously I know that we can't just do that right away so what would be the steps and let's say the contract is figured out and out of the what are the next steps let's say within that first 10 days after you guys um have been given the proposed or approved of the proposal well I think that um the the education component is one thing that really needs to get started right away. I'm also excited and intrigued. Um, Think Peace, Eduardo and um, Dave have talked about a community-wide healing event um, to, to begin 
And obviously that would take a bit of time to put together, but that's one thing that I know I personally would really look forward to co-creating and collaborating on. Um, but I believe that the real um, lift for this first phase is the education component. And I think that there are a lot of um, of ideas and, and opportunities there that I know Think Piece is outlined. So I think that that would probably be like a good place to start. There's also a lot of things that can happen concurrently. You yep. know, I know people are really interested in like, what about the healing? What about, you know, there's lots of things that are going on. And I think that we can kind of work through some of those. What are the priorities? I do want to say that like, while we will have ideas and we will come to you, like you would be those decision makers, Yes. you know, so I don't want it to be like, and then we take over. So, sorry, I saw lots of hands. I'm not I sure have a really quick was... follow-up just before you begin. Yeah, follow-up on some you see. Um, so the local team, so this education stuff happens. Um, obviously, we're all really busy people. Some of us have kids, all of that stuff. Um, how is the scheduling of that going to go? And how have you guys thought about um, like the situations with like there can't be more than four of us on a Zoom meeting or things like that as far as education goes? And like, let's say someone doesn't show up to something or like things like that. Like, how do you plan to to, for lack of a better term, to use Councillor Burgess's words, hold our feet to the fire. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, we'll get you some shoes. And, <laughs> and um, no, I think that, you know, a lot of the education component is going to come from Think Peace. And I think that they have a lot of tools for how to engage. I would, I would let Eduardo speak to that. Okay. I agree uh, with me. I think that the first phase has to be heavy on education and preparation. It's a, it's a phase in which, uh, for starters, we need to ensure that the community understands what this TRC is about. Because with all the um, controversies that have surrounded the, the whole process, uh, I, I really believe that many people in the community are still not sure of what, what the TRC is supposed to be or supposed to do. So communicating and educating the community about what the TRC is, what it's supposed to be, is, is a big part of this. Uh, I think there is a, a lot of work to do within the commission too in order to uh, clarify their mandate, uh, make sure that everybody has a clear vision of what, what we want to do and what they want to do as an institution. Um, and, and so the, the initial moments, I think, are going to be very much that, preparatory. Um, I, um, as, as Dave proposed, uh, we want to organize um, a public event, uh, but also we want to make sure that whatever event we organize is well prepared in advance so that um, it's not an improvised event. It's, it cannot, we cannot be organizing events without knowing what's going to happen there. Um, that is, we need to make sure that uh, objectives are very clearly set, um, responsibilities are very clearly set, so that uh, those events, I don't think they're going to happen in the first week after the budget is approved. I think that we are still going to need a few weeks, uh, a couple of months perhaps, to organize something uh, that is a space where we are all feeling safe, respected, and heard. Um. Making a recommendation to City Council um, to move this facilitation process along, I think, is probably one of the most important tasks for the Commission to decide on right now. And I also recognize that um, recent history has not yet been erased and hasn't really re been resolved yet. We haven't had any reconciliatory processes among the Commission. And I think that to make any other steps forward, that really needs to be highlighted. I really appreciate the fact that you've accommodated that in the proposal with the line item of inter internal restorative and reconciliation process for our leadership. Um, I wonder if you might, and there's a TBD next to it. And so I wonder um, what that TBD is placeholder for. Um, and if you, um, if anyone could paint a picture of what that process might look like for us. Yeah, we actually talked about, about this um, today amongst the local group and um, just haven't had a chance to talk with the larger team. Um, we understand that you know, typically, I think one of the things that we were looking at was sort of healing circles. And there's a couple of things that I think we want to honor, which is, um, you know, working with our Native partners. And so one thing that we had thought through was we are organizing an, um, 
an opportunity to go out there uh, to start working on what this looks like for Iowa and really just get to know one another. And then we would like to invite them to come here and, and do work with us to work with you. It may not happen like in the first 10 days, but it is something that we understand is critical um, to moving forward. And so we're trying to get ahead of that. So this contract isn't even, this proposal hasn't even put forth to council and we're already trying to organize ourselves to get out there um, so that we can have, hopefully if they would, you know, if we can get things kind of moving, then it would be led by and with our native partners. So, I mean, logistically speaking, obviously there are constraints with, you know, legal sunshine laws, like we'll, we'll have to split up, we'll have to reconfigure. Um, but that is our, one of our intentions. And if you like, we can, we can write that into the proposal so that it's clear uh, what, what we were anticipating. Um, but yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Um, I'm just want to go real quick, because I don't want to forget about something that I wanted to say. Amel said, you know, we, we need to have advertisements in different languages and things like that. So do we need to have like somewhere in our budget or somewhere for like translators as well? I just, I, you know. I think for the purposes of the proposal, um, we're gonna, I mean, I'm just sure saying an idea to write down for later to think about, yeah. you know, something later. I just didn't want to forget that because that was a good point that, that she made. And as far as, you know, how we, you know, what's gonna happen, you know, if we go to the city and they say yes, hopefully, and they say yes, and what's going to be the next steps. Um, that's kind of what I think that um, agenda item number seven is going to be about, because we need to start, you know, figuring out the ways that we want to, you know, even though it's not nothing that's confirmed that we're going to get this approved, we need to start. So I think that's what agenda item number seven is going to be talked about, because we need to start. We can't just say, hey, we have this approved. Now what we're going to do, we're going to start having this plan on how we want to outreach and to the community and that was a thing that I want to add it to this agenda so I think that's what we'll touch on then I, I will on quickly respond about the translation services Iowa City does actually have translation services and um, it's uh, I was just actually giving them props today because I think in the county they actually have one of the more extensive translation services and we have so many people in our community that um, we also want to um, obviously compensate for maybe that comes out of our you know, $10,000 community fund, you know? So again, trying to honor the, the professions within the community, but also as Angie had pointed out, the city has resources that they're already doing. So we should be able, you should be able to have access to those. Yeah, it, I mean, it should work out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I just have one last question. It's, um, I don't know if it's abstract, but I'm just curious because we are saying that we are happy with what you have written, but I'm curious what, what challenges do you anticipate? Um, what um, are you concerned about or worried about? And that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. Just curious, what are you anticipating um, as we move forward in this? I think something that's gonna be really important, especially because there are uh, so many proposals that are interwoven is that communication piece which we talked about the uh, coordinator piece we pulled out and kind of redefined a city expectation, but that communication amongst all the different entities is going to be absolutely key. Um, like V had talked about Eduardo, some of the stuff can happen at the same time, but really continuing to stay on the same page, which I would just wanna pause again and rewind us back. It was so important that our team, uh, Kearns and West, Think Peace, uh, the Native partners ourselves, have had so much time to pause and regroup and share truth so that we can stay on those same pages. Uh, but continuing to onboard new entities, uh, being able to communicate with them, being able to get all of your guys' feedback and work it into next steps. I think that's another piece that uh, because of the meeting laws, we have to make sure we communicate and schedule those two or three meetings and that you all are hearing the same things before we move into action. And that's something that um, I just get excited to have time with you guys. But I do think that is, it's a it's something we have to really put a lot of forethought into scheduling. So that would be my piece. Should I answer or did you wanna? Okay. Um, what am I concerned about? <laughs> um, I think what we're about to embark on is something our community has never seen before. 
Um, I worry about the white culture that permeates every single one of us and our everyday experiences. I don't, we don't have any control over how this, our community is going to respond to this. I, I think what sort of grounds me is the people in the room and the commitment to doing this together. Um, so there are things that we cannot control and there are systems in place that have been in place for a really long time that are going to rear their ugly heads. And I think that that's probably one thing that keeps me up at night is not sure how this is gonna unfold, but knowing that it is so incredibly important that it does. So it's a little abstract, but I think that that's, that's what concerns me. Thank you. Um, for me on that concern that you gave, I think one thing that may help alleviate it is well, uh, I think Eva was waiting before you. Oh, sorry. And I don't know if you want Annie to add her concern. Okay, sorry. Oh. Um, so one concern I had has already been kind of alleviated tonight because you guys are all already percolating on how do we want to do this? You've had to spend so much time getting to this point that I haven't heard you talk about what are we going to do with the media? Who are, how are we going to reach out? And so I see that. And so then now that I'm see, seeing that, I'm wanting to be sure that like my mind is going a lot of different, different directions. Where will that be on an agenda for all of you? Where will there be groups of you that are working together? Where will there be people in the community and in the city staff that are helping making that happen? Like all of that will organically happen. And just seeing that it's already starting, the percolation is starting, is really heartening. The other piece about uh, the broader community reminds me of something that Carrie Norton, who's here tonight, has been talking about for, since the get-go, which I just want to offer out, which is what about having, the, and I'm just tossing it out as an idea. What about having people in the different areas of this community, in the schools, in the housing, in the real estate, in, in, in the legal area, all the areas in our community, having them create their own team for looking at their own history of how they've been part of the systemic inequity that's my shorthand for what she said, and encourage them to make their own um, proposals and their own assessment and how they've actually made some progress and maybe begin to talk about some of their goals. And it comes to mind because we're talking about the broader community and the resistance, if in those areas of community members and professionals and nonprofits, people began grappling with their own areas that might make them feel part of what's happening and part of the change rather than resisting or something else. I don't know. So that just comes to mind. Check. I do want to honor. Our, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I was going to um, see if either Larry or Edwarder would like to answer the question. Go ahead, Edwardo. Sorry, I didn't catch it. I'm, um, I, I have to tell you that it's 1 a.m. here where I am, <laughs> I'm, kind of, I'm kind of fading. <laughs> if, if you could uh, just put it uh, briefly, Annie. Thank you. Um, well, um, it is, my question was, um, what challenges do you anticipate or concerns do you have as we embark on this journey? Right. So um, look, it's, we all know that the, um, the community is quite divided. And so one risk that I see is that um, people uh, continue to see the commission just as a projection of their fears and a projection of the polarizing uh, situation that they have lived and the polarizing the situation in which the city and the communities already live. And uh, the challenge is going to be to relaunch the commission and to uh, create and gain a new image of what the commission is and can be, where the commission is not 
um, at the center of the discussion because of some um, controversy, but it's at the center of the discussion because it helps um, create spaces of dialogue and spaces of mediation, spaces of, um, of, of construct construction of something new. But my fear is that indeed the, um, the, that there is a lot of damage in the psyche of the community and that people are still um, uh, polarized uh, or angry or depressed or traumatized and they bring that, those feelings to the commission. That is what needs to be avoided. And that is why we need to be very intentional and very careful in each of the steps we take from now on. I'll just very briefly say uh, that I think my, my only anxiety at this moment is just trying to find a way to sort of uh, limit the way that we undertake fact finding so that it can, you know, be both productive and meaningful and also not overtax the the whole process because i think you know clearly there are always going to be more facts that will need to be found there are people that who there are people who may challenge the veracity of facts that are found and so i just you know have a little bit of anxiety around just sort of creating boundaries around what that process will be and and what we're going to look to find and those sorts of things Thank you all. So you wanted, well, Mohammed wanted to go. Um, in terms of the concerns that were brought up, um, just want to say again, uh, one thing I think that will alleviate it is just more of a public dashboard and website materials and also just videos. So again, uh, if we have that information out there, it's more of us defining uh, not just what the commission is, but also maybe good to include things on what the commission is not so that others don't really have you know that room to say that hey this commission is also for this or for that so if there is no room where we have defined what the commission is not then that allows people to kind of let their imaginations really run wild uh the other thing is um when it comes to the actual like community partnerships and then doing more on the data collection pieces i think uh one thing that'd be really beneficial there is really leaning on the university community a little more. I mean, we have how many thousands of kids at the university studying computer science or data science or whatever it is uh, that are going to want to do some kind of project to be able to put on a resume or put on a job application, et cetera. So um, uh, I think that would be really helpful, uh, again, for uh, making sure that this stuff is repeatable within the community even after we we're done and it also spreads to more people around here as that group of people is going to be uh better at talking to the people that they work with or that they are also in classes with as we see that the university community doesn't really mix in with the iowa city community as a whole as much as we'd probably like to and uh with who is really involved in most of the protests it sounds like that'd be a really great place to uh, try to make a bridge. Um, as I thank you all for sharing kind of where your um, thoughts and anxieties lie. I think it was a really good question. It was important for us to hear. One of the things that I took away from what all of you said is, you know, um, the big question mark here is how the community responds and reacts to us. We've gotten to see a little bit about what the, what the community thinks about us as a commission, and it's mixed. We have a lot of support, and we have a lot of people who are casting doubts on us, and I agree with Mohammed. One of the best things that we can do is just provide education, education, education in terms of establishing who we are and what our process is going to be moving forward, um, but I also feel like really protective over you all. Like, I, you know, I think that we've all experienced and borne the brunt of um, receiving the con controversy and like the, the heaviness of all of that. Um, and I just like, it, it's on my mind for us to think about as a commission, how we protect our facilitator um, from controversy and just so that they can do their job. And I, I don't know if that means that we just, how, how we continue to draw attention so that they can just keep working, right? Um, so that's something that I want us to think about as we move into this. In terms of what you've heard tonight, um, in the notes that you've been taking, the feedback that we've been giving, do you need any more time with this or is this ready for prime time? 
I think that if it is acceptable to you, I, I it to me, and I'll let my other colleagues speak as well. Um, it sounds like this is acceptable with what we have. Obviously, we don't have like very minute details. I've heard a lot of like, can we add more for marketing? Can we, if you would like us to do that, we can certainly do that. But I feel like, and I've heard this from others is like, we could just get the budget, <laughs> then we can figure out the details. So I, I think if you all are good with this, we are good with the blood that's on the paper at the moment. <laughs> so yeah. Um, we can definitely put this forward. Before you go, mm -hmm. Eric, when do we want to stay on? Yeah, thank you, everyone, and uh, for the proposal. Again, right from the get go, we've been part of you as we worked on this to get to this point. Uh, yeah, like most of us here, I'm nervous about the total figure. I know we already, the almost 300 had had passed. So we are over that. I'm anxious about educating on why the almost, the why the jump from that. The other thing I'm piggybacking on is uh, with the council we are having to, to uh, projects going on for, let me use the word project, presenting our recommendation to them. And at the same time, our leadership concern because it is there. So, and as a, and a thank you very much, City, for providing a copy of this book on restorative justice, uh, bringing me back to the center of the work of this commission. And we, we did propose with our leadership issue, and um, it's a concern as we move forward with the facilitator proposal, because even if we don't discuss it, it is there. It's a white elephant in the hall. So that's a concern for me that, uh, we really can't afford to push it aside or have it under the carpet of the hall and, and move on. We have to deal with it. And, and it's a fortist of what's coming ahead of us, of this work. Uh, nobody said it's easy. Nobody said it's not painful. Nobody said it's neat. Nobody said it's linear. I will leave that. God gave me a, a lot of words. So I'll stop there and hope with those many words that I've put in my two points that I started out intending to put there. The, my anxiety on the total figure as we presented to council and that as leadership, the facilitator said their piece on restorative justice as far as our leadership concern is concerned, even now when they are not yet we haven't yet, they haven't yet been hired, but they've got that piece on there. They, they verbalized that. So ourselves as a commission, let us not sweep it under the rug and move it together with the facilitator project. I'll stop there because I'll keep going round in circles. It's Commissioner Johnson. Uh, <clears throat> I personally, I, I appreciate and agree with you as well. Uh, I hope that we can, I think uh, through hopefully item number seven with our outreach to the community, we can hopefully mend some uh, issues that we've had, but I definitely agree with, uh, we need to address the issues that we have and get them squared away and then put them away and then leave them permanently done. But just trying to act like they don't exist, that's, that's a problem that's waiting to happen later. That's all, so. I hope we can get that squared away. With that being said, uh, that's it. Yeah, I don't. I just got the same message that those two just had, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, for me, uh, just heard the piece on how you're comfortable with moving things forward as it's written thus far, but um, 
I would just like until the next meeting to just review uh, the entire proposal again and then vote on it hopefully at the next meeting if that sounds good but with that being said uh the things i brought up about kind of having more of like a dashboard newsletter things of that nature would like to schedule a time where i can meet with some of the facilitator group some of you or all of you prior to the september 15th meeting and i can just kind of show you just the sketches and ideas i have around those topics that way it's not completely on you to just make it up but at least having a framework that we can look at and bring to city council in itself. This is Commissioner Rivera. I'm gonna make a motion to pass this tonight. I'm gonna to second that motion. I'm gonna second that motion. Is there any discussion? My discussion piece is that uh, for raising the concern on um, taking care of the whole like leadership questions, but also the restorative justice piece, we did just talk about how the TBD is written there in terms of how that's going to go. So I don't feel comfortable voting on it tonight if that's going to be passed with it being written as TBD. I don't feel comfortable voting on it tonight too because I'm going to agree with both of my fellow councilors. We can't sweep stuff under the rug and expect to take a budget to the council. Uh, it's not going to, it's just my personal opinion and just common sense. We can't take a budget to the council at this point right now until the healing happens. Uh, this is Commissioner Johnson. Uh, seems like common sense seems to be common today. So uh, agreed, absolutely. Can I make one comment? Sorry. Um, so I'm not sure procedurally what would be helpful um, because I, I don't think anybody wants to sweep any elephant under any rug, um, but we did try and answer the question as to how we thought that that could happen. If it would be helpful and be more comfortable, we can certainly detail out what we said verbally. So it's not TBD, but it is an itemized, like this is the process, we are going out East and then we are coming back and then the process will happen if that's more comfortable. Now, I don't know process wise, obviously you don't have that in front of you, um, but I understand the urgency. So I'm, I'm not sure, I'm just trying to be helpful um, and address the concern. Cause I, I think we all agree. But that is a concern. Anyone? Go ahead. If if I may ask Stephanie to talk, we asked her how soon, if you guys accepted the proposal tonight, how soon, which council meeting would it go to? And it was a surprise to us that it would be so far out mm -hmm. because of the developing of five contracts. So do you want to mention that timing because it may well, be that that's I, so yeah. far out that you could still do work at the next meeting before that i don't know what the timing would be but i i think it would be short of a miracle for it for five agreements um to be completed and in front of the city council for their meeting on the 13th um so that's just my opinion um but how long after that point it, you know i i just they that's all handled through a different department so and it matters also, you know, the agreements are sent out between the parties and, you know, depends on how many edits changes that you you may have to, to the agreements too, so. I agree um, with the proposed facilitators that they have addressed um, my concerns, at least about the fact that there's a lot still up in the air in terms of how we as a commission cooperate and exist, coexist with one another, right? Um, that's part of phase one. That's not swept under the rug. It's it's operationalized in this proposal. My concern with pushing it back is that that actually pushes back our reconciliation process by making the, passing this proposal another item on the next agenda. Then we're still pushing back our opportunity to move forward um, with all, all the other things, good things we can do as a commission. I have if a question. I could... Are we able to possibly have another work session? Um, yes, but. Uh, to just expedite things after we get things squared away. What is your, so exactly what are you wanting to, what are you, what's your reasoning to do the work session versus regular? Well, if we don't take the vote now mm -hmm. and we take care of and deal with whatever issues that we have, and then instead of letting it go get the ball kicked down a road a little bit more, we just have a work session and try to get it squared away beforehand. For those who are not comfortable with proposing this, what are the specific recommendations that you can make to to them um, 
before we do that, I just, I would like to say one thing, yeah. if that's okay. Um, I want to say that I understand both sides of my fellow commissioners, and I hear you, you feel like things are being swept under the rug. That was never the intention. Um, we are trying to move forward in a restored justice this process and I personally believe that we don't have to move in haste and also two things can exist at the same time is equally port important to have reconciliation amongst ourselves and move this proposal forward and as um, we're hearing we can do both at the same time if we choose in my opinion to push back our proposal we are setting ourselves back so why can't we do it at the same time because I, I, I'm saying that it, I, I am very much in favor of, of us agreeing to move forward on the proposal with the plans to move forward with how we can heal our commission because there has been hurt done and we need to address it and we need to talk to the community about it. It is the elephant in the room, but it doesn't have to be for much longer. It's not like we're going, it's not like everyone doesn't know what's been happening, but a very important thing is this proposal. We cannot do our jobs without the proposal. So it is part of our mission. We have to do both at the same time, in my opinion, so. Uh, in my opinion, I just, I, I feel like if we're gonna step forward, step forward with your best suit on. So go in there, square it away, have everything kind of broken down and uh, with our best foot forward. So that's just my opinion as well. So I agree to disagree. And like that's my opinion too, because half of the half of these half of the people in the room know the rejection that we've got from the city time and time again. And that's what makes me nervous. That's for forward. That's what makes me nervous about the rejection. And now with this latest controversy or whatever, it just doesn't make me confident. It just doesn't make me confident at all at this point right now, because there's been no personal reconciliation which should have happened weeks ago. And that's what scares me. And I'm tired of the rejection. We've had rejection because we didn't want certain members because of the behavior. Some of the, some of the commissions wasn't here for the, all, the, all the rejection. I watched some of my fellow council members stay up and spend hours making budgets, all just for it to get rejected, all just for it to get thrown out. And at this point, we've never had a controversy like this. I, I've told people personally, I want this to pass, but I fear rejection. And it needs to be something addressed, even if it's something public, even if it's a, I haven't even heard, heard of an apology about the controversy and the personal things and how it affected my life. I haven't even heard that. Are Everybody we still answer? talking about the proposal? We're still, uh, uh, we don't cut me off. Uh, we had these problems before. You shouldn't be in here cutting nobody off. Don't cut me off. I'll let not you talk when you want to talk. Please don't not cut me all. off. Okay. So I'm going to ask everyone to take a uh, breath. Start that. Please take a breath. I understand that this is a hot topic. Breathe. I just and let, asked, let's let's okay, just go let back and finish what I was I'm saying. I'm going to let you finish. Could you just give me a second? Yes. I'm going to go straight to you. I promise. <laughs> I okay. I know that this is a hot topic and I do believe it's related to people's concerns. So yes, Amel is related to the proposal. So I'm gonna allow Eric to talk, please. Yeah. And could you please keep it to your concern? Let's my, not go- That's, that's my concern. Okay. I don't wanna put forward a budget right now without a public apology, apology to the commission, apologies to all the people that was offended first before we do that. Some, we can't have these books talking about restorative justice. You can't restore justice if the person that needs to go through the restorative justice can't even apologize to people. Okay, can't I can't even say anything, and that's mm -hmm. it. That concerns the budget. That's why I'm worried about the budget. Thank you so much it. for sharing. Um, if I can go to Kevo, and then we're going to go to Cliff. And, and uh, Commissioner oh, Nova has had her. her. Okay. Was it up first? Go ahead, Sakao. So that's sorry I missed you. That's okay. Um, I'm just going to be honest. I feel like sometimes like people just want this drama to be discussed more and more, and I'm just tired of talking about it. The true the reconciliation process is moving forward with Amel and this other person, uh, Roisanne, and that's going to take some time. And um, so I absolutely agree with uh, our chair when um, she says that two things can exist at the same time. There's no need for us to continue talking about this at the moment because there is stuff happening. 
and we will be getting reports from what I've been told and things are going to move forward in that capacity. Um, so I'd really like to focus on this budget. I'd really like to focus on getting it uh, passed uh, through council. I don't think it's going to affect us. Um, I think that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and that council is going to appreciate that. Um, I also don't think we're broken down or whatever it is that somebody said. I think that's rude. And I think that's um, a cruel thing to say about this commission that's actually still here together doing good work. So um, I'm proud of this commission and how we've handled things. And I just really mm -hmm. want to move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Pavo. Thank you. I desperately agree that we need a reconciliatory process as soon as possible. What this commission is showing, I think, with all the respect and love in the world, is that we shouldn't be reconciling ourselves. I think that we need medi mediation. I think that we need someone in the role of facilitation so that we can have someone do that work, set that work up for us. Because that's, I think, one of the reasons that we haven't been able to move forward with the reconciliation reconciliatory process is because there's no outside party who can organize us to, to start that process. So I think we we get there by passing this budget. Angie, can you go? Uh, when it comes down to it, uh, this is one of the, I, I had a few things that I wanted to discuss tonight that I tried to get put on an agenda and apparently I must've missed the phone call or something while I was working and it, it didn't get put on an agenda and it's exactly for this reason. Just to make sure this is specifically on the proposal or would this be better with the commissioner? No, uh, I'm not going towards the commission announcement. Not yet that this is still addressing exactly what we're talking about right now uh this is addressing your concerns about not pro about the proposal yes yes because i am worried about us failing with this proposal due to the fact that we have unresolved issues clearly amongst mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. and uh there are unnecessary issues that need to be squared away and these issues should have never existed in the first place, but they do. So therefore we have to deal with them. In order to deal with them, it will show strength in us to not only push forward with this proposal and everything else that we want to get done, but it also keeps us organized and not amongst each other at each other in any way, shape or form. I feel like uh, right now it's there's an uncomfortability in the air that is easily able to be seen, period. And with that being said, uh, we're not going to be able to move forward because we're going to be looked at as all over the place and don't have things together. It's clear as day. And to ignore things or to put things off so that we can have uh, another facilitator in is, once again, the same nightmare that I had before about kicking the ball down the road. If we would have just dealt with this a certain way at certain points in times, then we wouldn't even be having this conversation. And it would be a lot easier for us for, to move on. But if we constantly keep trying to cover things up for whatever reasons or move it along the line for whatever reasons, we're never, ever going to get things done and we're going to look unorganized. That's my nightmare because all this time we've been working towards a goal. We did not ask for whatever issues that came about to come about, but now we have to deal with them. That's the, to me, professional way of handling it, mm -hmm. to skip past it, to just whatever it is or make noises while we're in meetings and throw whatever we want to do out there is irritating at very bare minimum and that is not helping the situation in any way shape or form especially when it's people who caused it in the first place i i can't deal with this un level of unprofessionalism and i've been trying my best to deal with it for a long time so I do have announcements at the end that I would like to go further into, but as of right now, I'm gonna leave it and yield right there. So. Go ahead, Neil. Um, Angie, can you just like speak to the conversations that you and I have had this week? It seems to me that everyone thinks that uh, I have just been like, look, F this, F the restorative justice process. Like I haven't been talking to counselors every single day of the week. Made a podcast. Like I haven't. Clifton, hey, can you zip your lips? Thanks. That would be super helpful. Okay. Okay. So I just I'm going talk... to, can I, can you t speak to what I've been saying to you? Can I speak to what I've been saying? I have, can I? All right, everyone, do we need to take a break? Yeah.
Do we need to take a break? I have, I don't know if that's a thing that we can do. We, we need to take a five minute break and please let's reconvene. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Are we back on? I wanna thank everyone, um, especially in the public um, for just giving us a few moments to, um, to talk to, through some things. Um, I would like us all to come back and actually I would like to um, first share how I feel about things and then invite Angie um, to talk a little bit about the discussion we had the other day and how um, I, I really just um, was thinking about both sides. I just said outside that I am a person that likes to see um, and try to feel what people are thinking on both sides, because I do believe that multiple truths can exist. Everyone is entitled to their feelings. Everyone's feelings are valid. Um, sometimes you have to dig deep and understand why you're feeling certain things and why you're being triggered in certain ways. I truly believe, as Commissioner um, Rivera said, that we need a reconciliatory process that is mediated. Um, we have a lot of raw emotions on all sides. Um, we have a lot of feelings. I say myself included. I truly believe that if we're going to do what is best for this community, we should be the example. We should be able to showcase what we have committed to do um, to the community by showing what true restorative justice is. Now, I am still learning about restorative justice. Um, I am still getting into it. I am still a beginner, but I know that there is a better way than the way we've been handling it. And I think that everyone's voice deserves to be heard. So with that, I would love if Angie and V might be able to just share what that could look like so that we can move forward um, and do what this community has asked for and what this community deserves. Sorry to put you on the spot. Thank, thank you. And just, I'm, I am still very honored to be here with you all doing this work and just again, Sakao is being on there um, as well. Um, so the reconciliation piece, some conversations that have been had, but not with everyone. So that's part of why it's not on the agenda. It's not something that we've, but some of that, just bringing that to light here is having a, circle and because of the uh open records open records thank you the open records it would need to be multiple circles so creating a safe space thing somebody in the public had talked about earlier needing to create safe spaces uh, so that it's not in the public and that there's opportunity now i think the majority of the folks here tonight the commissioners have been in circle um as i understood it there was something that they all got out of it so wanting to offer um, an out of public keeping with the laws circles so that there can be a pathway sooner rather than waiting for the proposal later. I said it before that uh, coordinating everybody's schedules, it can be done. We did it in two weeks. It happened. We can do it again. And that would allow for some of those concerns that different commissioners are bringing up to at least be explored sooner rather than later. Um, so I don't know that I fully put it all out there, but it would be something that in one week, three days, I think Chastity had asked us to coordinate. In three days, we coordinated two sessions. I think we can do that again. And the proposal, if, if it's a proposal, is that it would be a series of circles specifically for TRC, current TRC members um, to come around the leadership, um, that topic and that challenge, not knowing where a circle will go, but allowing for that space. So it's not like so many have said that elephant in the room, it's being addressed as soon as we can get those two circles created. So just putting that out there, and I don't know if there's anything else that uh, you all wanted to add to that. Uh, I, I do wanna add something that I wanna be sensitive to. I remember Sakawas earlier on, um, uh, sharing their discomfort and that they would not be um, comfortable having circles led. Uh, and and Sakawas, if I'm getting, or Commissioner Nobis, if I'm getting this incorrect, please, please help me uh, by somebody white in circle. Uh, so I want to make sure that that's also elevated back into the space, that if this is a direction you want to go, making sure that it, it's in right relationship with all commissioners 
um, and not just the ones that want to engage this process uh, tomorrow. So with that, I'm just going to open oh, it back. Uh, to it's not just to What's clarify, it's not, it's not just about somebody white, it's just somebody not indigenous carrying out um, indigenous practices. And just I want to respond to what Angie was saying. Um, unbeknownst to a lot of people, and I don't know who else, who else but yesterday, I agreed to do a circle, to restore the just, to get this stuff together. But after this behavior today, I got to rethink that. I agreed yesterday without even knowing what was going to happen today. But I agreed already because I felt like we needed to have the healing part that's been begged for and yearned for so long. And I agreed to it without knowing what's going to happen today. I might have to reconsider that agreement. Anything else from any other commissioners? Does anyone else have any thoughts? Just want to note that like, um, so we have a line item in the proposal for addressing this. And um, I think maybe on a technicality, we can change that TBD to be more descriptive and be able to vote on it tonight because it's already in the proposal. But I would ask Stephanie to verify that. I don't want to hold things up. I recognize that there's a lot of tension. It feels like the crux of this is elevating that. And I think that maybe one thing that we can do to help, this is a small thing, but when we present to council, we can highlight that change and highlight that as like one of the first things that we will be doing. And we can outline the process with which we see that happening um, so that it's not uh, an unknown or you know something that people are talking around. It's something that we're addressing very directly knowing that as many people have talked about, many things can happen and be held at the same time. This pain and trauma has been happening, you know, for for some time now, even with not just the most recent iteration, but throughout the length and of, of the commission itself, like there's been, you know, harm that has happened. So I think that I just wanted to say that into the space because I, I don't want to split hairs here, but I think that it may just be a technicality and we can really dig in and address that. Um, and still allow you to vote on it. But I would ask Stephanie to clarify if if it's already a line item on the in the proposal and we just need to change some of the language to be more clear, can they still vote on it tonight? Yeah, I think if the motion is reworded to acknowledge with the with the additions to the TBD on the final version. And my um, motion then to approve um, this proposal and budget um, with a little bit of extra detail as you guys have laid it out for us in the TBD section for the internal restorative and reconciliation process. I'm gonna second that motion. Okay, any further discussion? If not, I'm gonna take roll call. Okay, Commissioner Ali? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Dillard? Yes. Commissioner Gathua? No, because uh... I feel there still needs to be some more simmering. Okay, Commissioner Johnson? No. Commissioner Harris? No. Uh, Commissioner uh, Nobis? Yes. Commissioner Rivera? Yes. And Commissioner Traore? Stephanie, before I vote, what's the current count? Four, three. Four is yes. Correct. Um. With that being said, um, I'll preface my vote with uh, I'm voting this way as I don't want to put a proposal forward with the commission being split in this way and without having more details on what exactly we can do to alleviate that split. So even though this may push things back, what is it, 10 days, two weeks, whichever one it is, uh, I'd rather have us all be on the same page or closer to that. So I will vote no. Okay. The motion is 4-4, which means the motion fails. Okay. Um, it's very clear that we're split, and I do agree that we should be on a united front when we submit the proposal. Um, I do find it unfortunate, but I do hear y'all, everyone's reasons, and I respect your decisions um, on both sides. I um, hope that we can move forward in discussions on a re reconciliatory process as been discussed by 
our proposal team, if possible. I don't know if that's still possible in the next couple weeks, um, like you just said, Angie. Okay. So with that being said, I will go ahead and uh, text everyone and maybe have Stephanie email and see when we can get people together because this is important. Um, but we we can still move forward. Um, is there anything else we want to do? We want to talk about on this line item. The only thing I would say that I would add that after almost two years of trying to go through this and trying to get a budget to propose, for me to vote no on that is really important. Okay, thank you. Anyone else want to say anything else on this line item? Can I just add one more mm -hmm. thing? Sorry, it's a very technical thing, but I just wanted to mention it um, because I know Commissioner Gathua was mentioning that one of her concerns is the budget. So um, originally when we had proposed our budget, it was 388.875. And then um, right now it's 402.130, which is a difference of 13,000 roughly. And I just wanted us to note that 10,000 of that was something new that we had added, which was that community fund for organizations and groups. So I just wanted to let the commissioners know that in terms of the actual budget, um, that there was some technical like small things I just wanted to po point out for next time for consideration. Okay, Chair, let me just make a response to that too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To the, yeah. Uh, when I put it out as a, probably I use the word concern on that in the budget. It's more of an anxiety and being more of a devil advocate because, and really that piece of education you've just put out there that we, will need to be ready because the budget uh, seems to be approved. Just that piece of education, because I get it, I've been part of this as we go to that point. So going in, I was just saying, I'll be anxious because, and I'm not here and the facilitator there. No, we've been moving together. Yeah. So that we have to be ready for that clarification. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Did you have something? Yeah, I would just add again, say, say it again, um, Commissioner uh, Nobis also had put out there just whatever reconciliation piece that you're doing, making sure that it's in right relationship uh, with what uh, Commissioner Nobis had stated. What did I state? Sorry, can you say that again? The the piece that you had shared about, um, I, I, I might have gotten the wrong word, but the not wanting to be in circle with, with it being led by a non-Native partner. Uh, or non-native, and again, my words are all over the place right now, but just wanting to make sure that that is integrated into whatever it is the rest of the oh, commission. Yeah, I can about. clarify that, that um, any uh, indigenous uh, um, tradition, cultural tradition uh, be carried out by a tradition, by, a, by an indigenous practitioner. Thank you. My only question is to Fellow commissioners, um, besides our um, the reasons stated for um, not passing the proposal, are we um, we are all happy with what it is now? So we can ask them to bring it back the following week in the same state, is what we're saying. I'm just making sure I'm understanding that we're not asking the proposal team to come back with any changes, just in the same way. I would have voted yes. Okay, just but I'm not. Not yet. We're going to get to that. Mm -hmm. Even for me, it, it is not the facilitator proposal because I used about simmering. It's more on our restorative justice process okay. and our leadership. Okay. I have been part of the facilitator pro proposal. We've been working on it. And yeah, so it's more just simmering on our own restorative justice. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I explained how the uh, intertwined and how I'm seeing it in my mind, tying to it, yeah. And, and I just want to add one more thing, I'm gonna be quiet. <laughs> please don't forget, you know, this has been a tough process, but please don't forget that, I don't know, you know, I know that this member, she had other, you know, issues going on in her life, but we lost a commission member behind some of this stuff. Assuming that that's what I'm assuming, but that was part of it because I know she had other things going on, health things, and I, had I think too, um, I, I think Commissioner, de, de, um, that's not related to this, and she did yeah, state the reason. The commission, it's, not. it's not related. She stated the reason why she was stepping down last time. Um, 
I hear why you are thinking that, but let's let's make sure we stick with the facts that Commissioner Daniels gave us and not put out anything false out there. I appreciate that. I don't think that's false. We had to have a conversation behind it. So okay. Um, does anyone else have anything else to say about this line item? I if with that, I want to thank our proposal team so much. Um, we did um, have the, we did say we we're going to open it back up for public comment afterwards. So I'm going to go ahead and do that online. And if there's no one up there, then um, in person, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, my name is Joseph Purdy, and uh, I've been experiencing a lot of violence at the farmer's market recently. Um, as a result of me not giving up my stall because I didn't want to get moved to the back uh, where I might have been attacked. I know question. this is a sensitive matter. This is uh, a sensitive matter. I'm just saying right now. Yeah, Saturday I'm morning, if I choose to, to use my sure. First Amendment rights on Saturday morning at the farmers. Excuse market, me, sir. We're talking about the proposal. Be, is this about the proposal? I expect not to be violated with violence. Thank mm -hmm. you. Just I just want to preface with when it comes to specific agenda items, if you have something on that, please state so and do so. But if it's just a general comments, we do have an agenda item at the very beginning of every meeting that allows you to comment on items not on the agenda. Um, if you needed us to reopen that portion, just please let us know that ahead of time. But we just don't want to be confused. And yes, sir. I humbly I humbly do apologize, sir. I am unfamiliar with the uh, way this group needs to be presented, Thank but you. I'm just saying I'm tired of the violence and I'm tired of the hate. Thank you. Okay. Um, if there's no one else in the public, we're going to move on to item number seven. Oh, go ahead, Noah. Cool. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. I just want to address that Nazi that just spoke. Nazi, get your ugly ass out of there. No one wants your voice. No one gives a crap about you. Like mute him, please. <laughs> I just want to let that Nazi know. Um, we do actually have to mute that, as we do have specifically in our bylaws that people that are um, in public comment are not to be addressing people directly uh, that are also making public comments, especially yeah, with words. We disagree, words but we don't do like that. But we disagree, but we don't do that. The man's a Nazi. <laughs> okay, um, can we take him off, please? Thank you, Noah. Like that is a certifiable fact. I'm just gonna. Okay. Um, if there's no one else, we're gonna move on uh, to item number seven. And um, to preface this, the reason why I put this on there is several commissioners asked about what we could do before we get the proposal passed. Um, there's concerns about how can we can be more visible in the community. So that's really what this item was about and why it is on there. Um, we're going to open up for public comments online first. If there's anyone that'd like to talk about that. And if not, we'll move into our um, public audience. Okay, commissioners, go ahead. Taking a cue from my fellow commissioners who um, kind of are just naming uh, some of the difficulties we're still facing, I, I I don't think that we can have a productive conversation about branding or uh, reaching out to the community until we do reconcile. I, I, I agree with that as well. Okay. Let's look back to the same place we just. Okay, so um, I will move um, unless there's other um, opinions or thoughts that we table this until after this I, is all. I don't understand what branding means. Like, can somebody explain that to me? Um, branding, marketing. So um, essentially branding, uh, your, your message in terms of your mission, value statements, who you are, what you are, what you believe in, uh, what your group uh, prioritizes, what your group does not prioritize, uh, what your group would like to focus on, what your group would not like to focus on, things of that nature. Uh, for me, um, I do think there are some things that could be defined of, around it today, but at the same time, uh, with uh, what we're looking to do uh, for more of the reconciliation amongst commissioners themselves, and also when it comes to, you know, whether we can do our own website, how that stuff really looks, I'd like to get an answer on that first and foremost, because that would really inform more of what I could say on this, and I'd also like to work with the facilitator group on that piece as well 
as we move towards actually getting this whole thing voted on and passed. Uh, branding, marketing, very important. But again, I just don't know that we're in a complete position now to define that before we even look at specific groups we might be looking at to partner with. So why, like, so the, the, if we do branding and all this stuff, like we're, we're going to be leaving that up to the people we hire. Is that correct? Or like, so um, the way I, I do, sorry, Commissioner Novus, um, what was the last thing you said? Oh, like, th would that be something Kearns and West would take care of? So that is um, definitely something that's been talked about. Um, the way I understood this um, line item is how can we maybe have our own logo or um, have t-shirts or um, when we're going out in the community, have our own um, presence um, just as we're, because as we know, um, as soon as we are able to uh, get this proposal passed, hopefully by city council could be a month or more from now. So we're, it was really just how, what can we do in the meantime? Um, and then hopefully, um, this is my own opinion, um, Kearns and West or our proposal team would be able to help us out with that in a more professional way. Oh, well, I, I mean, I have a great idea. I think we should hire Andre Wright to make us a logo and, you know, get us some t-shirts made up. And um, we should start looking for um, a, web, a web developer who can, you know, make us a website. I don't see why that has to be put on hold. I don't understand that. So as far as I know, just to, um, I have talked to um, jo Jeff Ruin and we are not allowed to create our own social media. So I assume that we're not also allowed to create our own websites. Um, Stephanie, if you can correct me on this. So. And um, I was one of the people that agree with what um, Chassis said that we need to start thinking about it. You know, that was kind of my thing where thinking about it, maybe if you, talk to somebody or you hear a story or experience start preparing you know that was my opinion that's when she texted me and that was my opinion we should start thinking about people that we come to truth telling and things like that and just trying to you know I talk to people all the time but you know we've been through so much that they say hey I'm ready to come tell my truth but you know we really don't have anything to facilitate that yet but since we're getting close to it or soon maybe you know somebody or you talk to somebody or you know an organization or a group or whatever it is, you know, you should start. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I meant by my part of it. The, the branding and the website, that's gonna be, you know, just what Chastity mentioned that, you know, we have to, can't make our own. And there's some different rules and things like that. I was saying finding individual people and start preparing them or say, hey, you know, how do you feel about sharing your truth? And just had those thoughts gathered, you know, so that's what I brought it up because that was the question that was asked here today. like. So, you know, once we get a budget, what's going to happen after that? Well, if we're preparing, we can, you know, just have things already ready. So, Sorry, I didn't understand any of that. But um, uh, so can you please, uh, Chastity, can you please let me know, like, what you mean by, like, not being able to make our own website? So um, as far as I understand, um, Jeff Ruin, the city manager, said that that is just not a policy that they are comfortable. They don't let any other commission do this. It would be best for us to use the Iowa City website that we have oh, okay. web page um, for yeah. that instead. Um, and also um, they have specific rules and guidelines and people are very specifically trained to um, maintain social media pages and, and things like that um, because it is governmental. So if we wanted to utilize our website um, that is currently through the iowacity.gov, we could move forward with that. Um, and oh, that's I would cool. So we actually have people like ready to do that work for us at the city. Yes, we could have them do that. Um, and what I would like to propose, not to cut you off, is that maybe uh, if someone could champion this. This could be committee led um, outside of this. Um, and what whoever decides they want to champion, I'm willing to help. Um, we can bring it back to us as we're preparing through the future so we can do something in the meantime. Um, it, I love the idea of uh, reaching out to Andre Wright. He is awesome at that. Um, and maybe talking to Stephanie about what we can do about uh, shirts or whatever in that well. But I think that would be best in a committee um, since we since everyone has great ideas. Um, so is there anyone here right now that like to champion that? Go ahead, Mohammed. 
Uh, I am a developer. I've made and managed multiple websites, social media, et cetera. So uh, more than happy to do so. Uh, my question though, however, on the not being able to have our own website or social media, as I understand it, it's more of something around who is accessing it, who has uh, edit functions and capabilities, who can access certain databases. So um, that question sheet I passed to you was just to get clarity around that. So I think there may be ways to still work with them where it's its own standalone website, but maybe just have a link on our ad hoc page. As my thing with the structure of the city website pages is it's, in terms of user experience, not very pleasant, pretty poor, and also very hard to find um, a specific page for a group. Mm -hmm. Like you, you literally have to Google ad hoc truth and reconciliation with Iowa City to quickly, <laughs> it's, it's faster to get to the page that way than it is navigating on the city page. And as a developer and someone that's made websites, that's just a horrible experience. <laughs> so um, if the processes are so set in stone that we can't go around that, I think we really need to update the processes because it, you're not, as a city, it isn't conducive to say we want people to participate, we want people to know what's going on mm -hmm. when it's so difficult to find the information in the first place that it's easier for someone to Facebook message me, when is your meeting and where is your agenda than it is for them to find it themselves, which happens to me monthly to this day. Can I just add, uh, piggyback onto that? So um, I think a hundred percent you're on the right track with like, in, in like sort of investigating what does the city have to offer you because they also do production. So like you could be making videos, you could, I mean, you should ask about Facebook live events. You should, I mean, there's, there, as um, Commissioner Nobis pointed out, like you have people ready to do this. You just need to like investigate, like who is that at what extent? Um, because they do, you know, they have PATV, they have like all of these other platforms um, that may be available to you. So I'm just gonna say maybe Cliff and Eric, you guys are nodding your heads like no, you wanna do that, this. I like, said that a long time ago. I said that if we, if we go back and watch the YouTube mm -hmm. videos from way back when we first started, that's exactly what I was saying right then. So, I mean, so well, I'm happy. And I've heard, and I've heard people, I think we had, I think that at one of our last meetings, the person, I'm having trouble even seeing mm -hmm. what's going on on that. I don't even mm -hmm. know what's going on. So, so I just transcripts that. such <laughs> that that's what she was looking for. So, so it sounds like uh, Mohammed has volunteered to lead this commission and I will help him. Is there anyone else right now that wants to join on, in on this? So Kyle, yeah. awesome. I'd like so Kyle, to help. I'm I'm a really great graphic designer, so I'd love to help. Yeah, yeah that's great. Um, so yes, Annie. Um, what I'd like to suggest is as you guys are meeting and you notice what the city services are gonna provide and what you don't have to purchase, but if you notice things like t-shirts or other things that you would want, it's possible for you to propose, I believe you can check with Stephanie, like a modification, an amendment to the proposal at the next meetings with something that very general, like mm. our $10,000 for local folks. Okay. Something for media. Good to know. Yeah, you just let us know. Yeah. For marketing, if you want us to add that in, if you need to. Awesome. Well, um, I go ahead. I'm yeah, sorry. That committee uh, on Eve, I, I was laughing, not be it's funny, but at the same time, it's sad. Because accessing even our meetings to a lot of people, a lot of people want to access and follow us, mm -hmm. but it's so complex. And I'm like, we're in 2022 and technology and also access the council because, I mean, we are a commission of the city, mm -hmm. but it's accessing it even for me, who is a little, uh, yeah, so the other people, they're like, we can never find you. We can never find the meetings. We can never, and I'm not a conspirist, but I'm like, is it a setup <laughs> that it's supposed to be inaccessible? Mm -hmm. It's supposed to, you're supposed to jump so many hoops mm -hmm. today when other things, my two-year-old grandbaby is able to access even my work if I'm not careful. So, yeah, so that committee, I'll, I'll stop with my words. I think I passed on the point there that they look into that and accessibility. And maybe this also going to Stephanie because thank you for bringing it here. It's it's sad, even if we laughed. Yeah, the other thing on outreach, 
-hmm. Now that we are talking about things that we can do, are we allowed, for example, if we are invited by an organization to, to talk about our work, about the commission as part of outreach? Are we allowed to do that? That's not my decision. That's our decision. So, I mean, yeah. I don't see why not. Because right now, for next month, the Refugee Alliance has always wanted all oh, Johnson County and Lynn County. They've always wanted to know or to, to invite us and to talk about what we are doing and what we are about. So that's one of the organizations I can help. For me, that goes into the branding piece, however, though, um, as there's that question of what you can say or what you should be saying when representing the group in situations like that. So uh, getting that basis of of what we're you know going to agree on, hey, this is what the commission is, this is what the commission is not. And also having the caveat of when you're speaking to those groups, if there's things that you're saying that are more personal opinion rather than full you know, commissioner opinion, be sure to say, I'm saying this as a member of the commission when it's you know something we've all agreed on. And if it's something we haven't, making sure you're also saying, I'm um, saying this um, as a matter of my own opinion, not something that the commission itself has agreed agreed upon as a whole so that people aren't getting all of that misconstrued yeah and i would add to that a little bit because he right um just like when i went and spoke to the school of workers it was basically the text that we passed in the resolution that i went to speak to them about and we all passed that as a whole and that's what so what he's saying is exactly right so you can't really say i'm speaking for the trc but we didn't the whole as a whole didn't pass it so when i went to speak at the catholic worker house it was something that we passed as a whole and i would add that i think that's something that um, I, I don't want to discourage people from talking about the TRC because we cannot get, we need as much uh, as possible, but um, I'm hoping that's something the proposal team can help us workshop um, so that we do have that correct brand as we are moving forward, that we're all on the same page. This is something that's very important to me in my own job. Um, it's like everyone's going to tell their own personal story, but it all needs to line up. So that's my only two cents with that. So I don't know if that answers your questions, but please. Yes, it does. I'm hearing a script, mm -hmm. uh, a script developing that we can speak from. Mm -hmm. The only other thing I want to say is um, while we um, just created a commission with me, Mohammed, and Commissioner um, Nobis, and I see your hands up, um, Commissioner. I for I did not see that now um, until now. Um, please, everyone else, if you have any ideas for this commission, uh, this committee, to please send it to us. Don't think that just because we're in committee that you have no say in this. This is our whole team effort. We're just going to try to put something together to bring back to us. I think that is very important. Um, Sakaos, if you'd like to speak again. Yeah, I'm, I just, I'm a little confused. So um, people right now are taking on speaking engagements and talking about the commission. Is that correct? I don't know if we necessarily just agreed to that. It was a question of what can we do next? I don't or, know. Or are people just, okay. I'm just saying it seems problematic if, um, you know, the commission doesn't want to move forward with passing um, a resolution to, uh, you know, just say yes to this um, current um, iteration of the budget for fear of whatever, then why would anybody be publicly speaking on behalf of the commission either? So I guess I'm just bringing up that issue. Um, That's I mean, a... I, I don't think it's a problem myself. I, you know, I'm just wondering, you know, where is there a gray area there? Are people speaking on behalf of the commission, talking about commission stuff right now? Like, if so, we should probably talk about that. Yeah, so that's been happening already, um, like uh, Commissioner Harris mentioned, with the Excluded Workers Fund. We, um, as a commission, we haven't necessarily um, made very many recommendations or statements, but for those that we have, I think that people have um, felt comfortable and I felt comfortable with them going ahead and kind of being the mouthpiece for those recommendations. Um, but I'm willing to hear if other people think that's inappropriate. I, I don't think it's inappropriate. I just think it's hypocritical to vote no, um, to move forward on this budget and yet also be out in the public doing, uh, representing the commission that you, that is in shambles apparently. Can I ask a quick clarifying question then? Uh, um, do you think that we shouldn't be um, representing like any of our past recommendations? 
No, we should be. Um, absolutely. I just think that it's hypocritical to say that we're not like uh, put together enough then to also, like if we're going to be outward facing and talking to the public about stuff we're doing, then why are we also just, you know, moving forward with everything else? That's what I'm saying. So it's just, you know, it's kind of strange to me. It seems like, um, you know, we're either all in for something or not for something and I'm all for passing this budget and for you know speaking to the public because truth this this reconciliation process that's going to be take happening is going to take a while and in the meantime I'm not willing to um let the commission just kind of sit and stagnate I hear what you're saying um Commissioner Sakalis um as far as I, I, I as far as I understood the suggested presentation is a little bit out it's not um we have some time to resolve some of the issues um, before it was possibly proposed that we would go represent ourselves uh, but i do hear what you're saying um i want to respond to that just briefly um when if i go out in public you know i speak about the trc um it's not on my own um we passed the resolution and i just wanted to educate them what that resolution was um, that's not that's nor or neither connected to a budget at all, and we passed that. We've, we've already passed that agenda item, so um, we voted on that. And if you were here, I think it was a unanimous vote, and that's the only thing I would speak on. I would never go out and say, "Hey, you know, this person." I've avoided media for the past two weeks because I don't want to go out and speak on my own. So I just want to make sure that that you know that we passed the resolution. Um, I needed to go get what we passed translated, and that's where I went to speak to the school the workers. Thank you for clarifying. Does anyone else have anything else to say on this agenda item? And just responding to Sakawi's, my question was... Uh, you might want to put the microphone closer to you. Yeah. Uh, it was a question on... On, because it's an invite from an organization in the community. And so my question was, is this something that we are allowed to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you for everyone's discussion on this. If everyone agrees, I'd like to move on to the next agenda item. Okay. Um, so the next agenda item is uh, next meeting, September 15th at 7 p.m. And I actually asked to have this put on there because I will not be there. And so I would need to uh, nominate someone else to run the meeting. I'm not sure if I have to do public comment on this. Um, I, I think if you're not gonna allow Enjoy. public comment on something then it should, the public should know as part of the agenda. But I mean, I, I don't, I mean. I, I mean, I can, I just, I, say, yeah, I mean. sorry. I just don't understand what the protocol is, but I can open it up to public comment <laughs> uh, about this agenda item. Is there's anyone online that wants to comment on this? Uh, please go ahead. And I'll also open up to people in the public here right now. All right. I think it's depressing to see democracy locked up at a standstill. Thank you. Um, so I will, uh, if does anyone have an opinion on this? Otherwise, I'm going to nominate someone. I think that is your choice. I don't think it's, you know. For the 15th, I'm just going to say I can't be nominated because I'm going to have to do it with a, I have other engagements. Okay, then I'm going to uh, nominate. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, I'll just volunteer myself out. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I volunteer myself out of chairing the meeting. Oh, out day. of? <laughs> yes, out. Hey, well, oh, I, okay. I can do it. I, I, I should say volunteer it out. I was, <laughs> I was going to nominate Kevo. That's, if, that's, a, that's, if that's if he would, if, if he they would disappear. like to do so. Okay. Um, if anyone has any issues with this, speak now or forever hold your peace. Talk to me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I second your nomination if there's something like that. Do we need to do a vote on that? Well, there's a vote on the floor now. So, um, Commissioner Ali, yes. Commissioner Dillard, yes. Commissioner Gafua? Yes. She said yes. yes. Oh, no. I didn't hear it. Sorry. Yes, uh, yes. Commissioner Johnson? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Nobis? Yes. Um, Commissioner Rivera? Yep. 
And Commissioner Traore. Yes. Can pass 8-0. Awesome. I don't think we have to have any other discussion on this unless anyone thinks so. No, just let it be known that um, I'm Rachel's so sorry, sir, but sorry. we we're not we we actually have no more public comments right now. So um, thank you so much for being here. Racial slurs don't bother me. Okay. Aims. Okay. Who anyway, seconded that? I'm sorry, I missed. Who that. seconded it? Yeah. Was it? I did. It was one gooey. Okay. I did. Thank you. Um, so, um, agenda, uh, agenda item number nine. Um, I will, who wants to go first? It, that's announcements. And I guess actually I'm going to go to the staff. No announcements from staff. Anyone want to go first? I don't want to go first. But I uh, I'll make an announcement. Um, uh, we uh, are in the midst of putting together uh, a, a truthsgiving event, um, which will be held on November 11th at the Englert. And um, I would encourage everybody to go to truthsgiving.org so you can um, understand what that means. Uh, it's an alternative celebration to Thanksgiving, uh, which um, perpetuates harmful stereotypes and a whitewashed mythology of true history. And so, um, Great Plains has been doing uh, a truce giving event for geez, like seven years now. And um, this is our first really big event. We've partnered with the Englert and we're bringing in um, a really great band called Audio Pharmacy. I would also encourage folks to check out um, Audio Pharmacy and their song Solidarity on YouTube. And um, there'll be speakers um, from the community, uh, myself included, uh, and um, Andre Wright, um, Demita Brown, and other Indigenous speakers, uh, drummers, um, and um, uh, singers, and uh, possibly jingle dress dancers. So it's going to be a really nice evening, and um, I just uh, just want people to keep an eye out for that uh, upcoming event. Can you say the date one more time, please? November 11th. And I, I'm telling everybody kind of soon, but I mean, it's like, it's finally happening. So I'm just going to start talking about it. <laughs> oh, did you see a time? Um, oh, there's no time specified yet. It'll be in the evening, I'm sure. Okay. Um, if everyone's okay, I'll go ahead with some announcements. Um, first, I, um, I, I sent, I've been sending this out to everyone, but my organization is doing a future ready survey and I really just would love everyone's help in getting this information. I work for the neighborhood centers of Johnson County, as you all know, and we work with a huge um, amount of immigrant and refugee families as well as new islands. People are not around here, not from here. And um, if you didn't know, we got a new executive director and a new associate director, and they together are a dynamic duo, the first in what we believe ever to be a organization led by African-American women um, for a legacy organization here. And that's very exciting. And the first thing that they wanna do is get information about how we can make this community better. Um, so if you could help me out in our organization out in our community out by forwarding this to whoever you know that lives in Johnson County, that'd be wonderful. We're trying to get to 2000 people. There's even an incentive. You can get $100 possibly <laughs> if you uh, fill it out with your name. Um, it's just very important. We wanna do what's best for the community. And I, I truly believe in that. Um, and these are also families that I'm hoping one day we will be able to, to talk to with their truths in the future. Um, another thing is I announced this before, but um, I'm going to be gone next time because it'll be the rehearsal before my musical <laughs> Little Chef of Horrors. Um, I want to invite anyone and everyone to come out. I will be excited to see you and also nervous, um, but it's going to be very fun and exciting. And if you like theater, um, it'll be a good time. It's at the Coralville Performing Arts um, Theater. Um, 16th, 17th, 18th, and then the weekend after, the 24th, uh, the 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Uh, tickets are on sale, and um, let me know if you have any questions. So that's all I have. Anyone else want to go? I'll go. A uh, couple quick announcements uh, before I go on to other things as well. Uh, I personally won't be here 
next meeting only because uh, we are going to, uh, at, at my gym, we are going to be helping out uh, rock study. We have a rock study program that helps fight against Parkinson's disease. And we are gonna go out there and actually train people out there uh, throughout the United States. So we're representing Iowa out there uh, over in uh, Denver. So with that being said, uh, moving on to the next one. The next one is uh, we have uh, our, our uh, level one and level two official certification clinic, uh, USA Boxing. So if you are a fan of the sport at all, and you don't actually want to actually participate in a sport, you have multiple means of uh, being a part. And one is being an official, a judge, a timekeeper, a referee of any sort like that. So if uh, anybody's interested, we'll have that at 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday, September 10th. Uh, and uh, that's, that's open to everyone in the city. Uh, we're trying to get as many people in as possible, uh, which leads on to the next announcement is because we are going to have the first uh, state tournament in years uh, here in Iowa City, which is a big deal because uh, we haven't had one for 20 years and just uh, Iowa City needs more uh, good activities, fun activities that are family friendly. All the events that we've thrown so far have been phenomenal. Everybody who's volunteered word for it, I would like to thank them right here, right now. And uh, had a lot of positive positivity coming from it. So uh, I would hope that it can branch off a little bit more for everybody else. That leads also into the next one. We are also, uh, with that state tournament that we're bringing in, we have fought vigorously to try to get the uh, Golden Gloves. I don't know if everybody's familiar with the Golden Gloves uh, in amateur boxing, but we have been fighting to get the Golden Gloves to save it. We almost lost it as a franchise here in the state of Iowa, and uh, we saved it. And now that we've saved it, what we're trying to do is bring it right here to Iowa City. It has never been done before. It's only been in Des Moines uh, and uh, Cedar Rapids, I believe. But that was like, I think, way back in the 80s or something like that when Rory Jones was on there, uh, from what I remember, or if I remember correctly. So we are fighting to bring uh, the Golden Gloves here to Iowa uh, for the spring. Things keep going in this direction. Uh, we will be bringing it right here to the heart of the city. And that will be a major event a great franchise to bring to the city and hopefully it can be permanent. So uh, with that being said, I'm gonna step that off to the side and go back to a few more important issues. I think that we need to have a code of conduct. Uh, I believe a code of conduct would help us out tremendously uh, with moving forward because a level of professionalism and what we're doing is extremely important. Uh, a code of conduct, meaning we have a certain level of respect for each other, that we are not, not only not talking over each other, cutting each other off or getting into our feelings, I'll say. Uh, a code of conduct, meaning even outside of being in this commission here. As a professional, my personal opinion and what I've read and learned about more, uh, a professional is representing a company, let's say. You got to make sure that you're carrying yourself one way everywhere. If you're not carrying yourself one way, you can harm the company. I came up with an analogy earlier about a, if I was a lawyer and I did something that was wrong towards my, uh, that uh, if I did something wrong and uh, it affected my company, I would be fired. It's just, it's what it is because we have a bigger picture. We have things that we need to square away and take care of. A code of conduct for us to kind of agree on, I feel like wouldn't hurt us and it would only help us. Uh, so I would hope that that was one thing that I wanted to put on the agenda earlier. There's a couple other things, but uh, right now that's the only one that's coming to my mind. I hope that we can figure that out and maybe possibly put that on the next agenda so it uh, we can kind of set a precedent so we don't have these issues, not just with us, but with other groups as well, too. Uh, if we do this, if we make sure we kind of hold each other accountable, I feel like that makes things a little bit easier. And the whole goal is to get jobs done and not uh, create blockages. So with that being said, uh, I yield. 
Any other commissioners that want to share an announcement? Um, so an update on the restorative justice process um, that I talked to council about. Um, Mayor Teague is giving me um, the Board of Supervisors September schedule. I can't move forward um, with any mediation process until I know what the available dates are. Um, I have a Zoom meeting with Jody Geddes tomorrow, who um, works with Oakland youth and is a mediator and participates in circles in Oakland all of the time and is becoming a dear friend. Uh, but uh, Jody has connections to specifically Black women uh, who are mediators. I think that's really important for that process. Um, Annie, I loved all of your advice that you gave me regarding it. Um, but I think to do it the right way, it needs to be done um, by a completely neutral third party um, and a black woman as well. Um, so that's that process. It's September 1st, so I'll probably get our schedule um, anytime within the next week. Um, so with that being said, I know that um, you guys are frustrated, confused, angry, upset. Um, I can't go back and change the last count or the last TRC meeting. Um, but if I could, I would have been here. Um, I didn't think mentally I could handle it at the time, but obviously like now reflecting on things, I think that um, it probably just would have been better to show up um, and like sit in the discomfort because I think that that's the only way that we can grow. Um, I don't know how many of you guys saw all of the council meetings um, regarding the situation. Uh, there were three separate apologies and accountabilities um, that I took. I also may not have, from hearing reflections from you guys, maybe I, I didn't emphasize or I wasn't cognizant of the fact that I needed to be more vocal about um, the harm that I may have caused the TRC. Um, so I wanna apologize for that. Um, and the lack of communication regarding everything, um, because this is really messy for lack of a better term. There's a lot of people that I'm having to communicate and try to figure things out with and try to get information from to try to figure out how to do this the right way. Like it's not just me texting Mayor Teague who's texting, you know, Roy San. It's a much larger process. Um, that I really think needs to be <laughs> taken very delicately and seriously because I think that it is bigger than both of us. Um, so with that situation, there's like a lot to unpack. Um, obviously we saw how tonight went. Um, and I know obviously like I'm coming from the place that I understand that I'm not taking anything like that you said in ways to hurt me. Like, I understand that I've hurt you and I've probably um, taken some trust from you. So I'm not gonna take anything personally as far as what was said tonight. Um, and I'm willing to sit in that discomfort and sit and let you guys tell me how you feel. I I welcome that, but I, I can't welcome that in this space. I can't welcome that type of, it's not fair to any of us. Um, it's not fair to um, the community as a whole. And I just think one big thing was having a safe space. I feel like that was reiterated a lot in the last meeting. Um, so I want that example. Um, I wanna struggle with you guys for the sake of something that's larger than ourselves. Um, and I really believe that if we're honest and direct with each other, while holding compassion for one another. Um, I think it's when we all take responsibility for our feelings and actions and try to find deeper understanding before we respond. Um, and deeper understanding might look like asking questions, reading reference materials. Um, but when we consider like a given organization formation or space may or not, may or may not be, um, this space to hold what we need to bring. Um, and that side conversation within our space should be for the sake of better understanding rather than like checking out of the work. Um, when we aren't mindful about principal struggle, 
Um, we can end up caught in this reductionist group thinking and it proliferates online and here and in the media and it's rooted in and it heightens um, our offline discomfort in cases of like disagreement and difference and community accountability and restorative justice in cases of harms and in the big long-term cases of harm and abuse. Um, so I'm totally willing, open, ready for that conversation to happen. I just think that like there really needs to be thought on like what a restorative justice circle really looks like in this space. And um, I'm going to invite you all to reach out to Angie because I had the deep conversation with her about what that would look like last night. Um, but I do want to end my statement with um, a quote. Um, and I think that this is really important for us to remember in the big picture. Um, it's Audre Lord. You do not have to be me in order for us to fight alongside each other. I do not have to be you to recognize that our wars are the same. What we must do is commit to ourselves to some future that in can include each other and to work towards that future with our particular strengths of our individual identities. And in order to do this, we must allow each other our differences at the same time as we recognize our sameness. And with that, I yield to the floor. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to share? Uh, just two things. We all got uh, the little book of restorative justice today and also a practical guide to planning collaborative initiatives to advance racial equity from the Divided Community Project out of uh, the Ohio State University. Um, my announcement is just I would like each commissioner to actually take the time to review these materials on their own time uh, as you're available. I'm not saying a specific date you need to have it done by, but um, I think it'd be great to, by the first uh, meeting in October, everyone could at least get through at minimum half of the restorative justice book and look to by the end of October at least finish it. Um, I would say sooner, but again, you know, I don't know what everyone has on their plate time wise. But if we're going to keep talking about restorative justice and really getting into this process, it's important to actually read some of these materials and these other perspectives. And same thing with the guide from the Divided Community Project. Uh, it's very extensive. It's about 52, 53 pages in total. So it's something that uh, over a span of 30 days, uh, say if you took 25 of the days, um, looked at about two pages at a time, uh, could get through it without really, you know, bringing a lot of extra effort on yourself. So I'm just saying it that way of, you know, you can do it in chunks or whatever it is, but over these next, you know, four to eight weeks, let's look to review some of these materials in our own time. So we have a little bit more of that background, more things to bring into discussions, and then just more of our own personal expertise. Thank you, everyone. Is there anyone else? Go ahead. Quick. Um, September is National Suicide Awareness Month. Um, as you might know, uh, people of color, indigenous folks are at increased um, risk of mental health crises and struggles and deaths by suicide. So um, as leaders within the BIPOC community here in Iowa, I hope that um, uh, you just kind of keep in mind uh, how you can destigmatize um, seeking mental health help uh, in the spheres of influence that you have. Love on your people. Thanks. Is there anyone else? Okay, I just want to say thank you all for being here tonight, for giving your time and, and breathing with us. I know it's been a little bit difficult, but um, we are all here and dedicated to this important process, so I really appreciate everyone. And to also re reiterate, um, I'm re listening to the book, and I would love to sit down and discuss with people as we're all learning together on this journey. So I'll be in touch with everyone, but let's all be in touch with each other as we're at different levels and learning. So with that, motion to adjourn. Second. All right.